And uh, this is copy from your textbook. It's uh, telling you how to draw electric field lines. And um, yeah, I'll point out the important things. It's, uh, um, this is one of the things I don't necessarily like is where both the textbook and other things come up with an arbitrary number of steps. <laughs> you know, here it's written as five steps or whatever. It doesn't necessarily have to be five. It can be some different number. But anyways, um, so first a couple of times, let me try following this here. So um, the question actually tells me to draw a simple set of electric field lines. It says um, positive charge and, um, well, just a positive charge. Huh? I, I can also do it for a negative charge. So um, um, with a positive charge, there are different ways to draw electric field. Let me review what mention of any of these the, the exercise makes. Let me go through the steps that I would go through if I'm going through it from scratch. So what electric field lines are, are they are um, they're representing something like a lines of force. That uh, it's a one, it's a continuous line that represents the direction in which force or proportionally field with a point in. So one way in which to draw those electric field lines is by, especially if you have access to a, a vector field like this, is to follow the vector field. You can start from one of the places here, here maybe, uh, that point. So the vector field uh, value here tells me I need to be moving that way and you continue to move that way until the next time you get a guidance, it says, oh yeah, continue moving that way. It says, continue moving that way, continue moving that way, continue moving that way. That's one. And I can do that for all other four nearest uh, um, vector field arrow that's drawn there. So when I compile all those four lines, that does constitute electric field electric field lines. And I can show with the, the strategy that they illustrate in the textbook that the lines I have drawn satisfy all the properties that they've stated there. So let me go through each property one by one. One is that electric field lines originate on positive charge. And they do, they, they come from this positive charge here. That's why I extended this backward so that they look like they are touching the positive charge. Um, it says number of field lines is proportional to the magnitude of the charge. I drew four lines. I guess uh, with this, it's kind of hard to tell. And because, I mean, you know, I could have two charges here, but in terms of electric field lines, it doesn't look like anything has changed here. I think it's going to be easier for me to demonstrate that with a question six. So let me wait until then to do that. Um, it says the at every point in space, the field vector at that point is tangent to the field line at that point. That's kind of how we drew it. At each time we reach the point, we follow the direction of the electric field line. And now four and five are interesting. Um, I think of, I find the four the most interesting, which says that the density of field lines represent how strong the electric field is. And as you look at it, I hope you realize that, yeah, that's true. Because as you look at it, you look at the electric field density in this neighborhood, just how close they are. It's the neighborhood close to the charge where the electric field would be strong. And then you compare the electric field density out here, just uh, how, how far away from each other the linear distance wise they are. So electric field is less dense around here. And that actually corresponds to the inverse square law that uh, electric force, hence the electric field, decreases as one over distance squared. So it's an interesting fact that is going to relate to Gauss's law or the introduction motivation of Gauss's law. 
the number five is the one that's a little bit i mean that's technically true i think uh, um, the downside of uh, sticking to that too much is um, well uh, let me demonstrate uh, what i want to show uh, it's kind of hard to show with one charge because it's such a clear um, diagram that there's no opportunity for electric fields to cross. Let me instead illustrate with this. So uh, I'm going to try to do it here. Here's a positive charge here. And let me place another positive charge here. Oh, around here seems fine. Now, when you look at this and you try to imagine electric field lines here, it's quite easy to, especially if you start out in the, I don't know, wrong space or whatever, it's quite easy to make a mistake where, okay, electric field comes out here, electric field comes out here, hey, they cross over here. <laughs> it's quite easy to do that. And what I want to say is, yeah, that's a mistake. Don't do that. Um, and what this statement really means is this, the electric field lines, they represent a single vector, single vector, which is represented by the net electric field, the sum of all the electric fields. So at every single one of these points, there are out to be one vector representing the one net electric field. So when you have a field lines that are crossing, like if you had a field lines that go like this, what that would mean is at this point, you don't have a well-defined electric field. So uh, since, you know, that's a mathematical headache, that's why the field lines can never cross. So in a challenging setup like this, you should still draw your electric field lines so that they don't cross. They go maybe like this. That's um, one of the ways to draw electric fields near a interesting point like that. Um, so that's uh, kind of how you draw electric field lines. Um, and so these uh, rules and the conventions for drawing electric field lines, they are useful because it illustrates, um, it, it's a visual tool. Uh, it's a graphical tool for uh, gaining an intuition for something that is a very abstract quantity. And um, I can illustrate with question six and seven how these uh, simple rules illustrate the key features. So let me um, let me have a positive and negative charge here. And I have done this before. With uh, you've seen this uh, vector fields before. Let me try this with uh, out the aid of the vector fields and just to try to follow the, uh, follow the rules that I see here, the, the, the follow these rules here. And when I do, uh, this, is, this is what you see. So I'm going to try to stick to rules number one and two, which is they originate on positive charges and terminate on negative charges. So I should have uh, field lines coming from the positive charge here. And I should have field lines ending at the negative charge here. And reading ahead, that the number of field lines are proportional to the magnitude of the charge. For both of these, let me draw four lines. It's a little bit sparse, but let me uh, work with the four lines. Uh, how do I want to draw these? Uh, let me draw it this way. I'm going to kind of draw them like a cross shape. So by which I mean, I'll have four lines that go directly horizontal and directly vertical. And I'm trying, starting with the very close to the charge because the very close to the charge, I can make the argument that whatever effect the other charge has, it's very small near the, the other charge. So at this point, the positive charge rules and the negative charge, it's so far away that you can ignore it. So let me draw it this way. So drawing up to this far, I've obeyed the rules one and two. And um, 
and now I can't, oh wait, I haven't fully obeyed it because I, if I simply end the line here, then it ended where there's no negative charge. So I have to continue this line and um, continue this line and connect it here. And I guess with these two field lines, um, if you were to draw something that looks like this, I guess I can quite stop you based on these rules, which is where you have to be reasonable. And <laughs> remember that these um, field lines represent electric fields. So if you're somewhere out here, you've seen before uh, with the earlier exercise, how the field, the electric field here kind of pointed a little bit to the right because of the negative charge. So I need to start to put that in and I know around um, or at points along this line, let me uh, mark that in yellow. At points along this midpoint between the two charges, I know the electric fields have to point horizontally. So with those directions of fields in mind, let me draw the picture so that this field line actually connects to that field line. It might look something like this. I mean, it's a bit crude. Um, it, you know, this part is especially, especially crude, but uh, something like this is something, it's, uh, it respects all these rules. And for the electric field line here, I can see that there's nothing that would cause it to bend up or down. So it's gonna go out to the left, out to infinity. And same for this field line here, it comes in from out at infinity. And when you when I turn in on the electric field, yeah, this kind of matches, kinda. Um, th these horizontal lines match how they should look, and these curved lines kinda match how the electric fields look based on the vector field representation. Now, here's the interesting thing that um, where where some of these rules um, help the, that the number of field li lines are proportional and that the field lines can never cross. So let me do what's represented in question seven. I think that was um, where, I think I did 2Q instead of, uh, yeah, double the charge on the left. So let me do that. So when I have double the amount of charge, I haven't turned on the electric field yet, so I don't know what that looks like. What I do have a sense of is the positive charge now needs double the number of electric field lines coming out. It needs electric field coming out here, 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 here. Now you see the bit of a conundrum I have, which is that um, these field lines, they have nowhere to go. It can't end here because then it's no longer proportional to the negative charge. So it can't end there. And it also can't go out to infinity because it's trapped. It can't cross the other field lines. So what that means is there's a more extensive modification necessary. Uh, with those addition of uh, four lines, I actually have to change how I drew these field lines as well. So that what I now can do instead is these lines will connect to the negative charge here this line will connect to the negative charge here. And though I think in the process of that happening, what you will begin to see is that around this point, it's no longer electric field pointing horizontally. It's now in some diagonal direction. And these field lines will, um, huh, I guess it depends. I think I'm okay drawing these two field lines going out to infinity and this is a matter of a geometric representation. I think I can have one of these two lines end on the negative charge, um, but not both of them. <laughs> I, I, maybe the way I have it now is fine. There can be a electric field line from negative there. There will still be a kind of line of electric fields that's along the horizontal there. So I think what I can do is I can have this also going out to infinity. So trying to follow those rules about drawing electric field lines, you now get some sort of asymmetric picture. 
which will be confirmed when you, when you plot the electric field vectors. You see that um, they are kind of more radially going outward and around this midpoint, the field lines are no longer horizontal except here. And, um, and you know, the field lines kind of come in steeper around the negative charge here. And there's other, other field lines that you can imagine just going out to infinity or, yeah, so. So that's uh, the intuitive picture of electric field lines. So what I've done here, it, um, it uh, serves as an introduction of electric field lines, um, which was done to a bit, uh, done to a degree in the recorded lecture video here. In the recorded video here, I do introduce, um, yeah, I think, uh, Oh, wait, wait, I'm in the wrong page. In the, it's also this week, um, in the chapter five readings and lectures part two. In this video here, I do introduce, in, <laughs> in this video here, I do introduce uh, electric field lines. So uh, what I did here is a bit duplicative of what's been done there. Um, and with that, I will, um, uh, finish this in a separate recorded video since it's gonna take another 30 minutes to an hour to build up the motivation for Gauss's law. <laughs>